I'm sure that you all feel just about like I do. I just got up in time to hear that choir sing. My, I like that. Did you like that? Oh, my, that was really good. Uh, I've always said that I, when I get a, over the river, when you want to look me up, I just find out where they're singing over there. And, I'll be sitting around somewhere. I want to hear all those voices blend together in that great angelic choir. I can listen to that a long time. I always wanted to sing. And I just couldn't, I just can't sing at all. It's just, uh, I tried to sing one time, well, several times, Amazing Grace. My wife is here now, and just as soon as I mention it, she starts with her hands like that. Don't try it. Don't try it. <laughs> so don't worry, honey. I won't. I've learned better. But someday when you get over your great big mansion up there in heaven somewhere and listen way down at the corner of the woods where that little cabin's built, you hear somebody out on the front porch singing, Amazing Grace. You say, Brother Brandon made it. There he is. <laughs> I want to be over there with you. This is a great day because the Lord has made this day. And no doubt many of you in your services this morning has enjoyed the wonderful fellowship of your pastor's message. And that's good. I'm so glad that you did. And just remember, back him up in prayer. He's the shepherd of the flock and the shepherd is the feeder. So you back him up in prayer and support him in every way that you can. And God will keep giving out those messages with him. And now to you new converts that's just been converted in this meeting. I don't know just how many, but there's been a great host has come forward to accept Christ. I don't just drift along and say, well, that's all right. But you take your fellowship. With some of these churches, the one that's closest to you or the one that you prefer. And then these men, the reason they're sponsoring these meetings is because they believe this ministry. They believe it. They wouldn't be setting up here to represent it if they didn't believe it. They preach exactly the same thing that I do, the full gospel. And they'll certainly do you good. If I lived here in San Jose, I'd belong to the church, one of these churches that I live the closest to, I belong to that church because I, I believe in it. I'm here to represent it. And I believe it's the church of the living God. And I certainly uh, appreciate your cooperation and their cooperation. And all together now, we bring in new souls to the kingdom of God. And God will be happy because new children is born into his family. Now, tomorrow night, we have Friday night, and then Saturday morning is the full gospel businessman's breakfast. I've been given the privilege and honor to speak at this breakfast. I wish to speak at that, the Lord willing, Saturday morning. I guess they've already announced it where it will be at. And then Sunday afternoon, back here for our closing service. And I want to say tonight, if nothing else happens between now and the closing service, I'll thank God as long as I live for this meeting. It's been a wonderful meeting. One of the most outstanding things about it is that unity, that feeling of close fellowship, just knitted together. That's what I like. That's where the Holy Spirit can work. Here on the platform, it's so easy with these brethren you know, I've seen the time that I had to, well, have people to leave the platform from behind me to minister. Many of you all have seen it. But this meeting, I haven't mentioned a thing because it's just been so much full cooperation everywhere. And that man there praying for me and out here till it's just been marvelous. I haven't turned and said nothing. Some of these ministers are sick. I know it. Don't worry. It'll be all right. Because 
their shepherds, if I'd turn to them and leave someone in the audience, they'd rather it would be one of their audience than to be themselves. That would be the attitude I, I really believe that they would take. And so, worthy people. And these handkerchiefs and things that's being laid up now, after a bit, before, while I'm praying for the sick, I'll go over and pray for them also. Because I would rather pray for them when I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon the, upon the congregation and all around. I think, what if this handkerchief here, that little note pinned on it, was going to my mother and she was laying in a dying condition? What if that was going to one of my children and they were laying dying? I'd want the most sincere that I could get from my brother to pray for them. Well, it may be going to somebody's mother or somebody's child or something. And we want to be the deepest of sincerity of these things. Then God will answer prayer. Now, that's close. I know it's, this meeting was pushing Christmas time. We were going to take another meeting up in, in Washington. Spokane, I believe it was. Or not Spokane, it was um, Yakima, Washington. But we see it's pushing a little toward Christmas. And these meetings has to be supported. You know that because I don't have the finance support of myself. I don't ask one penny for myself. Just that they pay the expenses so we won't owe nothing. That's all. See. And now... I'm, I'm working. I, I make my salary from my church. $100 a week. That's what I get from my church. But the meeting has to be supported. And then the people along this time, you've got families and children. Many has been asking me, as soon as you leave here, will you come to our church? You've got a little time now. I'm going back to my tabernacle. Because... Uh, for a little revival for them, just for them, on teaching how to receive the Holy Spirit and so forth. See, we're a Baptist background there. And so we want to uh, get into the real thing with them. So the reason I don't, because if I go into another meeting, mothers and daddies will take from their pocket to support the meeting. Maybe the little baby would, little fellows would miss something at Christmas and that make me feel awful bad, see. So I'll come back after Christmas and then we'll, we'll start from there again. But just before Christmas, I like to leave it just everything. And I wish I was financially able so that you wouldn't even have to never mention an offering. I'd have to mention it anyhow because I did that one time by a great check that somebody was going to give me. More than I thought they should be given, but I... I wouldn't accept it. And so the brother said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just take the check. If you'll come and go to a meeting, we won't have any. Take up one offering or anything. I said, that's fine. I'll do that. So then I did that. And it was not a success. People has to have something in the meeting. See, it's their meeting. And they'd meet me on the street and ask me, what's the matter with this meeting? We haven't got no part into it. They don't even take up an offering. So an offering is part of worship. That's right. I know more of that than ever since the other day when I was going to give Hattie Wright back that $20 that she had pledged towards the new tabernacle at Jeffersonville. The Lord said, just let her alone. And a few minutes later, I see why he said, let her alone. So from, I just made a promise in my heart. I was never going to try to stop anybody. That wanted to give something towards the kingdom of God. I did it many times. Turned it down just as fast as I could. I realized that I have robbed people by doing that. Because God had a program for that. And or he wouldn't have put it. I don't believe in begging. No sir. I don't believe in begging or people. But just, just tell the people. that Let it be like that. God takes care of the rest of it. Don't you believe that? Sure he does. He puts it up on the people's heart. But many times I think he's put it up on their hearts. To do something and then I've turned around and conflicted with that by saying, no, I wouldn't take it. No, sir, won't do it. Now I think about Jesus with that little widow putting in all her living, three pennies and thousands of dollars a rich man had put in. But he never stopped her. He let her go right on because he knew what he was going to do for her. Now, on these handkerchiefs, if we happen to miss your handkerchief in this meeting... Why, you just write to us at Jeffersonville, Indiana, 
And we'll be glad to pray over one and send it to you. It's absolutely free. Now, we don't have nothing to sell. Well, I'll take that back. The boys has the books and tapes and the pictures, I think, and so forth in the back of the building. And there, I buy those books. Brother Gordon Lindsay prints those books and I buy them for 40 cents less than I have to sell them. Then pay for them to be transferred. You know what you make? You don't make nothing. You lose on them. It's the message. And the pictures, I think they just about expenses to send them is about we don't want to make nothing. We brought nothing into this world. It's certain we take nothing out. What we're trying to do, I wouldn't even let those books be there. Or those things, if I didn't think it would help you some way, see. And I've told the boys, if I walk to the book stand, stand around, watch a few minutes and see an old dad come up and say, how much is that book? It's uh, 50 cents. And he'd reach down. I only got, give it to him anyhow. Let it go, see. Anyone that can't afford it and anything like that, some poor person, let them have it. That's right. It'll come some other way somewhere. And so it always has and it always will if you just put God first. That's all. Put God first. And now I keep watching that clock there and I realize that we don't want to stay here longer than we have to. Because tomorrow you have to go to work and I have feelings for that. I've tried each night to get out at 930 if possible. So before we go further and I read the word. Let's bow our heads and talk to the author of the word. Is there any would like to be remembered in prayer? Just raise your hand. Say whatever your need is. Just look across that audience. Lord, gracious Father, that just something thrills my heart when I see men and women, boys and girls, Raise their hands to the God of heaven in request. And I'm sure that if I, a sinner saved by grace, if if it would strike me the way it does, what does it do to the tender, merciful, heavenly Father when He sees His children raising their hands? The infinite God knows exactly whatever hand represented I pray thee, Father, to give to them according to their desires. May it be given abundantly. And we pray for all that are sick and afflicted everywhere. Calls coming in to go to the jails, to the hospitals. And, oh, Lord, it would be endless. And we pray as a church tonight that you'll... Remember each of them and heal their sick bodies and deliver them from their torments. Drive back the enemy of their soul. Take unbelief from them and may they be fully delivered by the power of Jesus Christ. We would ask tonight, Lord, that you'd bless every church that's represented here. Every church member. May thy spirit lead us and guide us into thy will for our lives and whatever church that we belong to. We would ask, Lord, that you would pour out fresh tonight upon your congregation here. The Holy Spirit may come in such power till there will be a peculiar anointing strike every one. That its sinners might run to the altar weeping and saints rejoicing and the sick uh, being well. The lame leaping like a heart. Grant it, Lord, for your glory. May we take notice of what we have already heard in these most outstanding songs of Zion. As the little choir was here to sing a while ago for us. Oh, how we thank you for these young people des- uh, has consecrated their lives to the service of the Lord Jesus and their talents they are using for his glory. We pray that you will bless them also and increase them in all that they do. Now bless the reading of thy word. And may the Holy Spirit take each 
word and sink it deep into the heart of those which you have chosen to receive it tonight. Hide the speaker, O Lord, behind the cross. May we see nothing but the Lord Jesus and the opportunities to win souls for him. Then when the prayer line starts, may there not be one across this platform, but what will be made completely whole or one anywhere in the building. May there be such a pouring of the Holy Spirit, such an anointing, until all will be healed. Tomorrow, may the phones be ringing across the country. The people that would be here in wheelchairs or cots are sick and afflicted. May they be calling everywhere to the sick. Come quickly and receive your healing. Grant it, Lord. We ask all this for your glory. In the name of your own dear child, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you tonight that reads with me in the scripture or keeps it marked down. I want you to turn with me to St. Luke, the first chapter. And we're going to begin at the 36th verse and read a portion of this scripture. You know, I like to see you bring your Bibles to the church. There's something about it that I just love to carry the word. I was thinking of my colored brother sitting here that is a pastor of that fine group of singers. A colored brother down in the south one time, they said he was carrying a Bible and he couldn't even read one word. And they asked him, said, why are you carrying this Bible? He said, I'm carrying it because I believe it. <laughs> That's a good sign. <laughs> he said, well then, how do you know what it says? He says, I can hear the others read it. And he said, I believe every word in it from kibber to kibber. And he said, I believe the kibber also. Because it's got Holy Bible wrote on it. He said, do you believe all that's written in it? He said, I believe everything that's written in it. And he said, whatever the Lord would tell me to do, I'd do it. He said, now, Mose, you know better than that. He said, what if the Lord would tell you to jump through that stone wall? Would you jump? He said, yes, sir, I would. He said, how are you going to get through that stone wall, Mose? He said, well, if the Lord told me to jump, he'd have a hole there when I got there. So that's just about it. <laughs> if the Lord told him to jump, he'd have the hole the time he got there. How true that is. Let's read now from the 36th verse of St. Luke. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age and this is the sixth month with her which was called barren for with God nothing shall be impossible and Mary said behold the hands made of the Lord be it unto me according to thy word and the angel departed from her. It must have been a, the sun was just rising and was climbing up into the bright Judean skies as it was reflecting its glistens over the Galilee. As the little maid was making her way down the street. She had a pitcher under her arm. It must have been Monday, just after the Sabbath, and she was on her way to the public well to get water for her day's supply. And she, as we look at her tonight, 
She's walking with her head down. She was the more than a child, about 18 years old. And she seemed to be studying in a deep study. She was engaged to a young man by the name of Joseph. He was a carpenter. And he was building at this time a little house that had to have a special attention. Because he and his lovely little wife Mary was to live in this house. And it had to have everything just special. Day by day she would come up while he was eating his lunch at noon hour and would talk to him and how they would look over the plans of the house and how the little doors was to be set in and it was to be a special house. And from where Mary lived, let's say it was just across the hillside, through the holler and up over the hill. And on Sunday, after the services, while they would sit out on the front porch after they had eaten their dinner and would look across on the other hill at the little bunch of evergreens and the little gables of the house sticking up, they would plan their future of what they were going to do. The Sunday before had been an unusual Sunday at the synagogue in Nazareth. The good rabbi had preached a mighty sermon. And he had told of the great God of Abraham. How that in the days of his visiting his children down in Egypt, how that he had brought them out with the mighty hand of power, how he had showed himself to be ruler of both heavens and earth, how that water could not stand in his path, or nothing could hinder his divine will, how that he had Sprinkle with his own hands bread upon the ground of a night to feed his journeying children that had no bread. And he had also referred to a time that they run out of meat. And the Lord God Jehovah had caused a great wind to blow and quails come into the camp by the thousands. And each Israelite without using anything more than their hands, had caught these quails and dressed them and had eaten all that they wanted. And it was at this point that Joseph must have said, Did you realize, dear, how many quails that it would take to feed them people? For there were about two and one half million people in that camp. And each man could easily eat two quail or more for satisfying. So it would take more than five million quails. But he's Jehovah, the creator. How did he could create quail? There probably wasn't five million quail in all Palestine or all the wilderness. But he's Jehovah, God who can put them there if there's none there he can still create them for he did it in the days of Abraham on the mount where Abraham called him Jehovah Jireh the Lord will provide anything he has need of then Joseph must have said something like this the message was striking but I thought the good rabbi ruined it at the end when he said, Well, it is true that Jehovah used to do miracles. But alas, Jehovah doesn't even do miracles today. 
that those days have passed long ago. All Jehovah wants us to do is to go to church and pay our dues and just live a good normal life. Joseph might have said, I kind of disagree with the rabbi. Because if he is God, he has to remain the same God. If he was Jehovah Jireh, could provide for them, he can provide for us also. How I would like to holler amen to Joseph. Mary slips back into the house and picks up a scroll and brings it out as they're usually Sunday afternoons. Bible study. And it happened to be this day we'd say that she brought out the scroll of Isaiah. And as Joseph took the scroll and opened it up, he began to read the scroll to Mary and to comment. Finally, he comes to the place of Isaiah 9, 6, where it says something like this. Unto us a child is given. Unto us a son. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Counselor. Prince of Peace. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. And while he was reading he heard a sigh. And he looked sideways. And the little lady. Sweetheart of his. Her little face flashed up and her eyes were glittering like the stars on a dark night and said, read that again, dear. And he read it again and she must have said, oh, who will that be? What is the prophet speaking of? And he said something like this or would have said, the prophet was speaking of the Messiah, which will come and one of our women someday will bear the Messiah. That scripture seemed to grip the little virgin. She just couldn't get away from it. That's what she was studying about, perhaps, on this morning where we find her going to the well to get water. Maybe I would say it was Monday, it was wash day. And she had to go get the wash water early. Her mother was old. And as she was thinking on that scripture, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And his name shall be called the Counselor, the Prince of Peace. The mighty God, the everlasting Father. She becomes so interested in what she was saying or thinking until she almost forgot to turn the corner. And as she raised her head, there was something strange. Seems like a light flashed. And she turns down towards the city square where the Virgin well stands yet today. And she must have thought, oh, the sun flickered on some dew that's left up on the side of the hill. Or it might have hit a piece of polished metal somewhere or a armor from a Roman soldier. That's perhaps what I saw flicker before my eyes. So she goes on dreaming. Oh, it's too bad that the church today doesn't walk in the Spirit like that more than we do. For it's that kind of a time that when God comes to you. You know, it was on the road to Emmaus when Theophilus and his friend was speaking and talking and thinking about Jesus that he walked out of the bushes by the side of them and walked with them. It's why we are thinking upon Him. The trouble with the world today, we're thinking about everything else but Him. Then we wonder why we don't get blessings. Just a few weeks ago, about 
three weeks ago when I sat down by some sycamore trees, as I was telling you, and began to think it was there for the first time that he came and declared the new ministry to me. Think on him. Draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you, saith the Lord. Think upon him. David spoke that he was write his commandments up on the bedpost and meditate on them day and night. That's what the church ought to do. Would keep your heart tuned in with God day and night. For it stands when he appears. Solomon said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Begin to think that you're one of his children, that he saved you and he's good to you. And you love him and he loves you. Don't just wait till you go to church or some convenient hour. Just keep him on your mind all the time. And as she went on, walking down the street, there was no one yet on the street. And as she walked along the little dirt path for a sidewalk, all of a sudden she began to realize that there was something around her. A real strange feeling. Oh, that's the most wonderful experience I trust that everybody here has experienced some kind of a times. If you haven't, this would be a good night to start. Just start thinking about Him and worship Him in your heart and all of a sudden you'll feel the close fellowship of the Holy Spirit all around you. And it gets so anointed to you, can't hold it any longer you raise up your hands and or do something you just can't stand still when it comes as she was thinking not noticing who was around her the little lady perhaps with a pair of sandals on her feet walking along this little dusty path but thinking of the lord and of his promises of of things to come and as she was thinking all of a sudden that feeling got so great around her until she just raised up her head. And when she did, standing before her was a light. And standing by that light was Gabriel, the angel, the archangel of God. If you want angels to appear to you, keep your mind on God and off the things of the world. Go about your business. Go to your church. Go to your washing of dishes. Wherever you are, keep your mind on Him all day and all night long. Then God will do something. You're drawing close to Him. You've got the world shut out. Just you and He are together. This appearing of the angel frightened the little virgin. She had been taught that the days of miracles were past. But she had seen something happen. The angel told her, said, Hail Mary. Hail means to stop. And he had a message for her. When an angel comes, he's got a message for you. And the Holy Spirit, God's angel, is here tonight with a message for every believer. Just keep Him on your mind. Keep thinking about Him. How lovely He is. How sweet He is. Of His promises. If you're sick, get this on your mind. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon Him. And with His stripes I was healed. Keep your mind centered like that. Something will happen to you. All of a sudden there will be a something draw nigh to you. An anointing will come on you and out of that chair you'll go. Hallelujah. 
draw nigh unto the Lord and he'll draw nigh unto you. And she looked at this great angel and his name is Gabriel. Now there is angels of the Lord, many of them. And they come to the earth and bring messages. But Gabriel, when he comes, there's something major going to happen. He was the one who announced the first coming of Christ. He will be the one that will announce the second coming of Christ. And he told Mary, Thou hast found favor with God. What a message to bring to her. Thou hast found favor with God. And while she was thinking on that scripture, then that was a scripture that was confirmed to her. Now, if you're sick, think on that scripture. If you're lost, think on that scripture. If you want the Holy Spirit, think on that scripture. And the Holy Spirit will confirm it to you. There she was. And the angel said, told her that she was going to have a son. And they would call his name Jesus. He'd save the people from their sins. And he said, your cousin Elizabeth is an old woman. And it's six months with her now as a mother who was called barren. Now, Mary and Elizabeth were first cousins. Our Lord and John the Baptist were second cousins. Elizabeth's husband's name was Zechariah. He was a just man, a priest at the temple. He was a good man. And all his life that he had been married to Elizabeth, he had prayed and held on to God that God would give him a baby, but she was barren. And she'd got some 60 years old. And Zechariah was weighing 70. And still they had no children. So Zechariah went up to the feast to do his duty at the feast, which was to burn incense while the people were praying in the congregation. And while he was in there burning incense, he looked standing at the right hand of the altar. And there stood Gabriel, the archangel. Live right, do right. Angels are still living. God still has them at his command. There stood Gabriel, the archangel, and told him what was going to happen after this days of his administration at the, the temple, he'd go home and his wife was going to conceive and bear a child. They called his name John. And we know the story. Now, the angel Gabriel, six months later, had visited Mary and told her that her cousin was going to have a baby also. So Mary knew that that would be a miracle. Of that old woman, well stricken in age, having a baby. But she said to the angel, how shall it be with me, seeing that I do not know a man? And ask, then you shall receive. He said, the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you. That holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. That's how it's going to happen. Mary never talked back to the angel. She never discussed it in any way. The only thing she said was, Behold the hands made of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Did you think even the priest Zacharias had questioned him being an old man and her old too, how this would be done? And a priest who should know the word and know what God did. But this little virgin was just a child. And she had no husband. She had to believe the impossibles. Something that had never happened before. But she never argued. 
She never questioned anymore. His word was enough for her. Oh, if the church could just get like that. The word settles it. If God said so, that's all we need to know. How it's going to be, I can't tell you. But if God said so, it's going to be that way because God said so. Oh, that's what I want the church to know. If there's anything I want you to sink faith in is in what God has said. It has to be true. Did you notice she had to believe the impossibles? She could not go back like uh, Zachariah could. He could have went back to Sarah. And Sarah was almost a hundred when she had the baby. And Hannah at the temple. She was old woman too. And they had plenty of examples of that where they had husbands. But Mary had to believe something that never had happened. You've got thousands of examples of divine healing. Look at the people who's been healed with cancer, blindness, dumbness, deafness, all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. We've got plenty of that to look at as example. But this little girl didn't have nothing but just his word, and that was sufficient. His word was good enough for her. And I want you to notice, she didn't wait till she was positive it was going to happen. She started testifying about it right away. She didn't wait till she felt life. So she could be positive she's going to have the baby. Just as soon as she heard his word, she took him at his word. And she started testifying and praising God for the baby before she felt anything. That's, give us more Marys around here that can take God at His Word and praise Him. Whether you feel anything or not, take Him at His Word. God's trying to find somebody who will take His Word. I don't care how you feel. Someone say, well, I don't feel any better. I was, went to the meetings. I was prayed for. I, that don't have nothing to do with it. God said so and that settles it. Amen. Somebody who will take His Word. That's what pleases Him. Believe His Word. That's what pleases God. That's the only way you'll ever find favor with Him, is believe His Word. And Mary took Him at His Word. She said, that's sufficient for me. And she went around telling everybody she's going to have this baby before she had one sign of it at all. One sign of anything. She still, she knew that it was going to happen because God said so. Don't you see the true seed of Abraham? God speaks, they believe it. That's the reason I like the church today that can take God's word. When God says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, the church says, Amen. If Jesus said, The works that I do shall you do also, the church says, Amen. Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. My name, they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents, drink deadly things, lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. The church says, Amen. They don't worry about it, wonder how it's going to happen. They just take him at his word and move on. That's the true seed of Abraham. That's the children of God. Mary had to believe for the impossibles. But God takes the impossibles and makes them real when his, he's took at his word. The doctor might have said, you'll never get rid of that cancer. The doctor might have said, you'll never be able to walk again. Well, it, well, it's impossible for you to do it. But impossibles fade out when God's took at His Word. No matter what the doctor says, he's doing the best he can. But God is God. Amen. And His Word is just like His. Amen. You take His Word, that settles it forever. If thou canst believe, say to this mountain, be moved and don't doubt your heart. But we'll believe that what you've said will come to pass. You can have what you've said. God took at His Word. Oh, she started right away giving praise to God and telling the people that she was going to have a baby knowing no man. Now remember, she had thrown herself in liability, uh, 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 liable for criticism. But Mary didn't stop to think about criticism. She didn't care about criticism. When a man comes to get the Holy Ghost, 
You don't care what the neighbors is going to say. You don't care if you shout, you speak with tongues or whatever you do. It's a past that. You took God at His word. You don't care for criticism. You've lost all your devil-made, homemade, intellectual society called prestige. The thing that you want is favor with God. You don't care what the Holy Spirit causes you to do, to shout, scream, or cry, or bawl, or anything you want to do. Anything the Holy Spirit puts on you, you do it because you don't care. You've lost all that man-made stuff. You're free in Christ Jesus. The Spirit of God has set you free. And you're free in the power of God, bathing in His beauty. Worshiping Him in the Spirit and truth. You're a free person. You've tucked the Word of God and tucked a hole in your heart. You don't care. You throw yourself. You say, well, if I, I'll be standing on my job someday and the boss said, say, I heard you was over there at a holy roller meeting and got healed. I'm afraid. No, you're not. Brother, if you're the seed of Abraham, you count it a joy to stand and testify of the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Certainly you do. My people shall not be ashamed. If you're ashamed of me before man, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. And the holy angels said the Lord Jesus. So they're not ashamed. They're not afraid. So after Mary hearing the good news about Elizabeth. Oh, she wanted to share the news. You know, there's something about this. That when you really take God at His promise and see Him fulfill it, you want to tell somebody else about it. You just can't sit still. You've got to do something about it. So she took off that little woman by herself up along the river, over the, up the hills, into Judea, into the mountain country. Now, Elizabeth... As soon as she found out that she was going to be a mother, she had hid herself. Went back into the room and I'd imagine, let's just think, she's sitting back there making little booties. And getting all of her little work ready for this little fellow was to come. And she's making the little blanket that she's going to have him dedicated in. And all these things, getting things ready because she's going to be mother. But the thing was worrying her. It was six months with her as a mother, and the baby had not yet moved. Now, anyone knows that that's subnormal. Way out of way. About two or three months or more. Maybe four at the most. There's life, but there's no life yet. But she was sitting back in a little room. And let's just look now and get us a little seat along the side of the road and watch. Here comes a little virgin up the road, her little eyes are sparkling, her cheeks just as rosy as they could be. Not with Max Factors. No, no. But lit up with the power of God and the joy of God. Just as hard as she could run, her little eyes are glistening, you know. And she, I see Elizabeth raise back the curtain and look out. And she sees a young lady coming up the Judean hills. And as it got closer, she recognized it to be her cousin Mary so she wraps a little shawl around her and out she goes to meet her oh she must have thrown her arms around her and hugged her and kissed her you know people used to be they cared for one another you know but nowadays they don't they don't care for each other people so cold so far away from one another it used to be when one of the neighbors would get sick, we'd all go in, sit down, help them and cut their wood, cut their corn or help them plow or whatever was going on and help them. But today you don't even know your neighbor's dead unless you read it in the paper. It's so cold, so it is different. Honey, I don't mean this to be bad to my wife sitting there. But the other day, some time ago, it's been, we were downtown together. And it just seems to be a trend. And there was a, a lady on the street, and she said, How do you do, Sister Branham? And I never heard her say a word. And I said, Honey, that lady spoke to you. She said, I spoke to her. And I said, I didn't hear you. She said, I smile. Oh, I said, Honey, a little old silly grin don't take the place of a good how do you do. I, I, I like that to be friendly. 
But a little old silly grin. I like for somebody to speak, not give a little grin like a possum. I, I like for it to be a real how do do I like a good old pump handle handshake. Not long ago, I was in Florida, and there was a, some woman called a duchess or something that, that let them have some ground where we put the tent up. And that night, Brother Bosworth said, the duchess, I thought, now who am I going to meet now? Said, she's back there, wants to see you. I said, well, there's plenty of sick people out here too that wants to see me. And he said, well, as you go out, just shake her hand. And that woman had a pair of specs, and they were on a stick. Great big woman. And she had them specs in her hands like this on a stick. And when I passed by, she said, are you Dr. Branham? I said, no, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am, I'm Brother Branham. And um, she had enough jewelry on her hands and uh, bracelets, enough to send a missionary a hundred times around the world. And, and, she, and I said, I'm Brother Branham. She reached out her hand and she said, I am charmed to meet you. I got a hold of that big fat hand and brought it down. I said, get it down here so I know you want to see you again. I just hate a lot of that put on. What are we anyhow? Six foot of dirt. It's a soul in there that God's looking to. Jewelry won't cover sins. Neither will clothes cover sins. It takes the blood of Jesus Christ to cover sin. Then he makes us what we are. Then in our hearts, Mary, she grabbed Elizabeth and Elizabeth and Mary and look at them patting one another and hugging one another, kissing each other, and so happy to meet each other. What a friendship. And I can see them when they finally... Uh, leave the, each other's embrace and holding each other's hands and talking. Oh, I can hear Elizabeth say, Mary, I haven't seen you for so many years, but I could still know them pretty eyes from your mother, Anne. And, oh, you're such a pretty girl. How are you getting along? Oh, just fine, she says. I'm just feeling wonderful. And she says, I was so happy to hear the news. That you were going to be mother. Oh, she said, that is right. And I'm so happy too. She said, Mary said, but you know what? I'm to be mother also. Oh, you and Joseph have been married. No, I'm not even married at all. <laughs> and I'm to be mother. Well, I don't understand this. Now, I see my baby is six months past and it's never had life yet. And I've been a little worried. And Mary said, oh, don't worry, because the angel of God appeared to me down on the road and told me about this. See, and I don't know any man, but yet the Holy Ghost has overshadowed me, and I'm going to bring forth a child, he said, and I'm going to call his name Jesus. He'll be the Son of God. And just as soon as she said Jesus, little John come to life and begin to leap and jump for joy just as hard as he could go. And Elizabeth, her face lighted up and she said, When did the mother of my Lord come to see me? For as soon as his name was spoken in my ears, my baby leaped in the womb for joy. If that name of Jesus Christ brought life to a dead baby the first time it was ever spoke through human lips, it brought eternal life in the baptism of the Holy Ghost into the womb of Mary because the Bible said, or Elizabeth, the Bible said that John was born from his mother's womb full of the Holy Ghost. Oh, it ought to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. In my name they shall cast out devils. Hallelujah! That wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. Laying in our fingertips tonight. Laying just ready to receive it. If that did that and think what taken place, I can see the Spirit of God working between them two women. One prophesied of one and one prophesied of the other. The Holy Ghost upon them when the name of Jesus Christ was called in their midst. Oh, my brother, that same name of Jesus Christ is more powerful than I there ought to be among the people here tonight. What do I do to a sick man or a sick woman? What are to do to a person that's bound by the devil on his own promise anchored in heaven before God with his own blood to make good in the Holy Ghost here showing signs and wonders. In my name they shall cast out devils. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. All these signs shall follow them to believe. Do you believe it? Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, our hearts are so happy tonight. We just feel like we could take off. It seems like if you just raise back the roof of this old building, we'd go on home tonight. Knowing you that great name of the Lord Jesus, that magnificent name, that precious name, a name above all names, a name that everything in heaven bows to, everything on earth will bow to it. Oh, God, every devil I have to bow to it and recognize it. And you give that name to us. Ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. Oh, Lord God, who made the promise to your Son, Jesus. Let the name of Jesus Christ tonight set every sick person free, set every sinner free, set every person free. May this be a free meeting right now that the Holy Ghost can come in and move and give glory and praise to God. Grant it, Lord. We are your people. We're not under any, any bondage. We are free. The Son has made us free and we are free indeed to serve our Lord and our Father. We thank thee. Talk about a Thanksgiving day for freedom. We've got a real... We, every day is a Thanksgiving day. Every hour is a Thanksgiving day. I who was once blind can now see. I who was a sinner am now saved. Oh God, how free we are. How we can give you Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving from my heart. That Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is not dead, but He's alive among us tonight. Proving Himself alive by signs, wonders, and miracles. Pouring out the Holy Ghost upon His church. And this last day is just before His appearing. And signs and wonders appearing everywhere. Marvelous things in the God of heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Giving praise and glory unto God. Oh, how we thank You for these things. It's a real thanksgiving in our heart. Receive the praises of Your people, Lord. We love You. We know that You are and a rewarder of those that diligently seek You. Father God, save the sinner. Bring the backslider back home. Fill the believer with the Holy Ghost. Heal the sick and the afflicted. Get glory into yourself. We feel something moving. In the last few years, there's been something taking place. The Spirit of God has been moving across the country. Great revivals and signs are showing of His coming. There's earthquakes in diverse places. The sea has taken nervous prostration, spurting forth great tidal waves. All man's hearts are failing with fear, distress between nations, perplexed of time. Israel returning, the fig tree putting forth its buds. We're at the end time. The Holy Ghost is here, and we love Him, Lord, and we're worshiping Him. And the very power of God will take us home to Him some of these days. In a rapture, it'll raise the dead forever. Grant it, Lord. Bring to pass tonight all your promises among your people. Heal every one of these people, Lord, these handkerchiefs represent. May your spirit look down. You've seen them when they put it here. You know their objective. You know their motives. You know their faith. I pray, God, that you'll heal each one of them for your own glory. In Jesus Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Oh, blessed be his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Oh, His blessings, His presence, His thrills just chills my soul through and through to know that the magnificent, the great Holy Spirit of God was promised to be poured out in the last days and He'd give the farmer and latter rain together. You've had the latter rain. Here's the farmer mixed with it. The works that Jesus did is reoccurring in the church, showing that He's coming. If I had my hand up from there, the shadow, way away it looks dismal. As it gets closer, it becomes more positive until it becomes the real hand. That's the way the blessings is. For years after years after years, as the church come down, the power of God growing closer and closer, till now it's just about to take on the image of Jesus Christ, His church is, and the power of His resurrection. All the signs that He did has reoccurred in the church again. We're at the end time. Seek ye God, people. I know you think that I act awful odd to be a preacher, but I'll assure you this. If you felt the way I felt, you'd act worse than that, I believe. Yes, sir, because I'm trying to hold it back and just about ready to explode in my heart. The thinking of the God of heaven who created the heavens and earth is right here with us right now in His Word, confirming Himself, showing that He's alive. He's not dead, but He's alive forevermore. 
How we love Him. How we appreciate Him. Oh, there's no money could buy it. There's nothing could get it. It's free to everyone. Whosoever will, let him come drink from the fountain of the Lord. Oh, there's nothing can take its place. He's the first, the last, the Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the end. He was shared before there was a world. He'll be here when the world's gone. He's the both root and offspring of David. He's the bright morning star. Hallelujah! He's Christ, the Son of the living God. He's the real one. And we love Him. We worship Him. He's God of heaven, made flesh and dwelt among us. The bosom of the Father. Oh, how I love Him. How I appreciate Him. Me, a poor lost sinner, staggering along the streets almost blind. Now He's given me good eyes, give me good health, give me salvation. All the blessings of God give me friends. When my own parents turned me out and said I'd gone crazy, my church run me out the door and said he's lost his mind. But he said, if you'll forsake, I'll give you fathers, mothers, friends. Hallelujah! Oh, God, around the world has he did it over and over and over. I'm thinking when the prophet told David, do all what's in your heart, for God is with you. And that night the Lord spoke to the prophets to go tell my servant David. I'll tuck him out of that sheep coat and give him a name like the great man of the world. When I think of that, how God took me out of the ditches of sin. Give me friends around the world. My heart thrills at his thoughts of his great name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The only thing I miss, sorry, I haven't got more lives to live to serve him. Talk about giving up something Oh, there's nothing to give up. It's all to win. It's all to gain. If I had 10 million lives, if I could go back to 16 years old and be king over the world for 10,000 years or die right now and go to heaven with Jesus Christ, I'd say, let me go right now. I'd like to go just to be with Him because now I have eternal life. 10,000 years is up. I'd be gone to hell. But now when 10,000 years goes by, I'll have no less time than it was when He entered there. Amen. He's real. Who made the flower? Who put the color in it? The same man that put the color in the flower put the Holy Ghost in my heart. Glory to God. He's here. Yes, sir. Don't be alarmed at him because he's here. God means worship. God is an object of worship. And I love to worship him. He's my all in all. He's my peace. He's my father, my mother. He's all that I ever had, all I ever will be. Everything lays within Him. Oh my, let's just raise our hands and praise Him. Oh Lord, I, I just don't know what to say, Lord. The Spirit of Your presence is just packing my soul from place to place. Oh, let it break forth tonight, Lord, that what I've asked for. Grant it, oh Lord. Oh, Father God, send forth Your blessings upon Your people. Anoint the people. Send the Holy Ghost in great power and great measures of grace and love. Grant it, Lord. Hear our prayers. We praise you. We love you. We raise our hands to you. We lift our hearts to you. You are our life, our soul, our being, our food, our water. You are our life, our sight, all that we are. We live and breathe by you, Lord. Oh, take us, Lord. Mold us, fashion us. Take us away from the world. Oh, God, put your spirit in us. You said you are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, a spiritual priesthood, offering spiritual gifts, the fruits of our lips, giving praise to God. That's what we're doing right now, Lord. Giving praise to our God, making a sacrifice, throwing up our lips, our praise, and saying we love you, Lord. We don't care what anyone says. We love you. You're our God. You're our Savior. We are our healer. You're our King. You're our salvation. You're our life. You're our. You're all that we are, Lord. You are that to us. And we thank you for it. Bless us, Lord. We wait on you. Wait for you to guide us. Send us anywhere. Do anything with us you want to. Take us in your hand. You're the potter. We're the clay. Mold us and make us after your own way, Lord. Make us images of God. Grant it, Lord. Now, Father God, as we present the sick to you tonight, as they cross this platform, let the Holy Ghost come.
Let the angel of God who spoke to me up here at that mill that night, let the one who has talked all along life's journey, let him come here tonight, Lord, and stand and confirm these words and make this Bible live anew again. Grant it, Lord. Let it be so. Grant it. May every sick person that's here see it, rejoice, and accept you as their healer. May the sinner see it, rejoice, and accept you as a Savior. May the believers see it, rejoice, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. If John could receive the Holy Ghost three months before he was born, when he's laying dead in his mother's womb, what ought it to do to us tonight, Lord? Oh, send the Holy Spirit and confirm your great word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you. I love you. Because He first loved me. And purchased my son. First, I love him. I now the man. I love him. All together. our strength, isn't it? That's our strength. That's how we live is by the joy of the Lord that's in our midst. Billy just told me to give out prayer card D1 to 50. Who has D number one? Raise your hand. Prayer card D number one. Number two. Number three. Number two. Did number two stand up? D number two. Number three. Number four. Where's four? Raise up your hand. Number four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Line up right over here now. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. Only be all things are possible.
All right, number 10, number 11. D, number 11. Who has it? D, 11. Is already up there? All right, put them in the line back. D, 11, D, 12. Who has D, 12? You, son? All right, come get your place. D, 12. D, 13. Raise your hand. All right, 14. Raise your hand. D14, D15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, D20. I didn't see your hand. All right. That's fine. All right. Just keep lining up back there. Some of the ushers, if you will, help him back there to get those lined up. D20. Move them back, Billy. Move back the line. Put them around the side. Let's get a big line up there. Oh, I feel good. Amen. Amen. I wouldn't swap this for nothing. If I'm crazy, just leave me alone. I'm happy this way. I'm more happier like this than when I had my right mind, as you call it then. I got my right mind. I, got, I want the mind of Christ. That's what I want. And it's very always contrary to the world. All right. D20. 21. Who has D21? All right, sir. Right there. 22. Raise your hand. 23. 24. 25. 26. 27. 28. 29. 30. Who has D30? I didn't see that hand. D30. All right. Back there, sister. Come right on. All right. We kind of let so they won't. We'll... Go to line up. Now, remember, anybody's got a prayer card, hold it. You're going to come up on the platform. See? We're going to pray for you. We give you a prayer card. We're obligated to do that. Oh, how wonderful. 31. Who has D31 way back? 32. 33. 34. 34. 35. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. D, 1 to 40. How many do you say give out? 50. We don't know just what will happen in the prayer line. It might stop, start. You know how it is. And that's why we get them according to number because we don't know just where it will be. All right. 41. Who has D41? There. All right. 42. 42. All right. 43. 44. 45. 45. I didn't see it. All right. 46. Come right over here. 47. 48. 49. 50. Who has prayer card 50? All right. How many do you 50. I guess that's all of them. All of them. Now, they're scattered prayer cards. There may be some of these we may not get through. But let them stand in the line. That might help them. <laughs> so, you know, you give a person a prayer card, he's 80% healed right then. <laughs> the boy says when they give someone a prayer card, says that, <sighs> that's, that does something, you see. Gets them to believe it. All right. Now they're scattered out. Now remember, before these services close, there'll be one night that we'll take every prayer card in the building. See? Bring them to the platform. Every one. Now how many doesn't have a prayer card and you're sick and you want the Lord to heal you? Raise your hand. All right? Just believe. That's all you need to do. You have to line them up there. Let's just hum real easy now to herself while we're making ready for the line. Now remember, is there anybody here for the first time? Oh, my. Thank you. You see, I, I wish they'd all come at one night one time. Is anybody here that's never been in one of my meetings before? Let's see your hands. Well, look at that. We're so happy you're here. 
I, I may have to go through this just a little bit. I'd purpose in my heart to do something else tonight. I'd purpose in my heart just to bring that prayer line right straight through and pray for them. <clears throat> That's what I was thinking of doing. That's the reason I call that line. I might have to explain this to some of the people, the newcomers, then, if you just a minute. You see, we believe we're living in the last days. We believe that Jesus Christ promised when he's on earth, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. He said, a little while and the world won't see me no more, yet you'll see me, for I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Now, if we can find out what Jesus was a long time ago, the works that he did, then we can find out the works that he'd do now. Is that right, newcomers? Now, let's just take just a moment and find out the works that he did. Let's just think. Did he call himself a healer? No. Did he claim to heal? No. He said, it's not me that doeth the works, it's my Father that dwelleth in me. Is that right? And when he passed through the, the pool, by the pool of Bethesda, there are the great multitudes of people, lame, halt, blind, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. And Jesus, no, there's one man laying there. He, he wasn't blind. He could walk, but he'd had some kind of a trouble. Maybe it's prostrate trouble or, or two births. He's retired and he'd had it for many, 38 years, I believe. It was not going to kill him. He's laying on a pallet and he said, Will thou be made whole? And he said, Sir, I have no one to put me in the water. I remember Jesus said he knew the man had been this way a long time. Now, he knew it. Now, he healed him and walked away and left that multitude laying there. Is that right? Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever, and did that? He did. Then he was questioned. And what did he say? Now, that's St. John 5, 19. Now, listen at his words. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing. That doeth the Son likewise. Let's go back and see if that's true. After he was anointed of God, filled with the Holy Ghost, because the Messiah was the anointed one. Is that right, brethren? The, uh, the anointed one. He was a man. When it comes to man, he was born, eat, drink, had flesh and blood like we have. But his blood was not, he wasn't a Jew, neither was he a Gentile. He was God. See? The blood comes from the male sect. How many knows that? He wasn't his mother's blood. She was Jewish. And then who was his father? Who was his father? God. Then God doesn't have blood because God is a spirit. But he created a virgin blood cell into the wombs of Mary without sexual desire. It brought forth the Son, Christ Jesus. Through that blood, I'm sanctified. Through that blood, a sinner is made clean. Through that blood is what I have faith for this healing here. Through that blood changes my life. That's the blood. When he was 30 years old, the Holy Spirit came up on him like a dove. And he started his first ministry. Let's see what he did, the works that I do. The first thing he did, we find out, there was a fellow, Andrew, went and found Peter. His name was Simon, then, and brought him to Jesus. And Jesus said, to him, your name is Simon, and your father's name is Jonas. Thou art the son of Jonas. Is that right? The first thing he did... Now, do you believe that Simon, he, he was a Pharisee, of the church of the Pharisees, we were taught by the Chronicles of the Bible, that he was a Pharisee. Therefore, he had been taught that there would be a prophet raised up, that Moses said, there will be a prophet raised up. How many knows that the Messiah was to be a prophet? The Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like unto me, said Moses. He is to be a God prophet. And as soon as he found out that he knew who he was, he recognized him. Then away went a fellow named Philip, went over in another country 15 miles around the mountains and found a fellow by the name of Nathaniel, his friend, under a tree praying. He said, come see who we found, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. He said, now could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? I think he gave me the best answer any man could give. said, come and see. Just don't sit there and criticize. Come find out for yourself. And I can imagine going around the hill. They said, say, you know that old fisherman you brought that uh, 
them fish from that time and he couldn't even sign that receipt, couldn't sign his name or nothing. Yes. Oh, Simon, you're talking about the, the fisherman, the big fisherman. Yes. He come up before this one we know to be the Messiah and he told him what his name was and told him his father's name. Ah, Juan, said Nathaniel, you've gone off the deep end. But as soon as he walked up before a congregation, something like this, Jesus was perhaps ministering to the sick. He looked around and he seen him coming and he said, Behold an Israelite in whom there's no guile. Why, well, I took him right off his feet. How did he know he was an Israelite? Not the way he dressed, because all the Easterners dressed alike. Turban, robe. He said, an Israelite in whom there's no guile. In other words, a, a guileless man, a Christian, a real believer, we'd call him. He said, Rabbi, means teacher, when did you ever know me? Well, this is our first time ever meeting. When did you know me? He said, before Philip called you when you were under the tree, I saw you. What eyes? Fifteen miles around the mountain. I saw you before you come to the meeting under that tree. He said, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. Jesus said, because I told you that you believe, you'll see greater than this. Then, of course, there was those standing there who said, now that man, they couldn't deny it wasn't going on, but they said, he's Beelzebub. How many knows that? Beelzebub is a fortune teller. A devil. He's doing that through the power of the devil. And Jesus said, I forgive you for that. But someday the Holy Ghost is coming to do the same thing that I do. And one word against it will never be forgiven in this world or the world to come. Because they call the Spirit of God an unclean thing. The Scripture says that. Now, we find out that many of things... He went up to Samaria, and that's another nation, another race of people. Like Ham, Sham, and Japheth's people. Now, he got to the Samaritan, which is half Jew and Gentile. And a woman is at the well, and he talked to her a few minutes. He said, bring me a drink. She said, well's deep. It's not customary for you to, uh, to call to a Jew, to a uh, Jew ask the Samaritan for something like that. He said, we have no dealings with each other. And as it went on, the conversation went on. Finally, he said, go get your husband. And she went to get, she said, well, I have no husband. And um, is someone sick back there? All right, set her right down. Just, just set her down. Now, is that a minister with his hands on her? Lay your hands over on her. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, take the evil sickness off of that sister. May the power of God heal her body. We cast it away by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Don't doubt. It'll be all right. Amen. And so when the woman come, and she said, I ha he said, go get your husband. She said, I have no husband. He said, that's true. You've got five, and the one you're living with is not your husband. What did she say? Sir, I, now listen to this now. Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. How many knows that? I perceive that if you run that reference, it means that prophet. That was to come. I perceive that you are the prophet. She said, we know when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. Is that right? Well, that was the sign of the Messiah. And he said, I'm he that speaks to you. That same Messiah sign would be the same today as it was then. Is that right? It'd have to be if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The works that I do, shall you also. Now, if the woman needs some air, she's sick or kind of fainty. All right, she can take her and get air, all right, if she wants to, but she don't just have faith. She'll be all right. Just let her. Now, give your attention this way. Now, I was going to run this line through. Just go right straight through and pray for you. How many of you says, if I do that, you believe you get well? Raise your hands. Call. These signs shall follow them. Believe if they lay hands on you. How many in this building is strangers to me and I don't know nothing about? Raise your hands. All around, I don't know nothing about. All right. If Jesus Christ is the same yesterday day and forever. Here. I'm a stranger to you. Yes. All right, to the new audience. Just this one or somewhere somebody needs some help along the line with stop. I don't know this man. I've never seen him. Don't know a bit more what he's standing here for or nothing. God knows. Now, if Jesus has risen from the dead and I've told the truth about him, 
then if he is risen and this is the last sign that he promised, just like he said as it was in the days of Sodom, and that's exactly what God did in the days of Sodom. How many has been here this week to understand that? That's exactly the sign God gave to Sodom. And Jesus said it would repeat again just before his coming. How many knows the Bible says that? When the angel with his back turned and said, Abraham, where is your wife Sarah? How do you know who he was? He said, she's in the tent. And he told what he's going to happen to her. And she laughed in the tent. And he said, why did she laugh? See? He said, that'll happen again before the end time. I do not know the man. Never seen him. But here's, here's a case like when our Lord and Simon met together. That's right. Same way. All right. We being strangers. Now, the man could be an infidel, he could be a hypocrite, he could be a Christian, he could be sick, he could be needy, I I don't know, you could need finances, I don't know what he wants, he's just standing there, a man. But to you newcomers, and the man, here's my hand, I've never seen him in my life knowingly, he raised his hand and I didn't know him or he didn't know me. Isn't that right, sir? That's right. Raise your hand so the people see it. All right. Here's two men. Now, if Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, now, if the man's sick and needs healing, I couldn't do that. Because any redemptive blessing that Jesus died for is already paid for. Now, if Christ is your old, he could speak to you and tell you something about yourself. Is that right? It's a nervous condition. You're real extremely nervous. And besides that, you've got somebody on your mind that you're praying for. That's two children. They're in a mental hospital. That's exactly right. You're praying for them. Your name is Mr. McCree. Go home. Receive your healing. Be made well. You believe? Have faith in God. All right, come. Have faith. Now, I just go start praying for the people. Now, but wait, this woman here, just a minute. I want to take a man and a woman so they can see. All right, we're strangers to each other. Jesus Christ knows us both, doesn't he? I, I do not know you. You don't know me, so we're strangers. But you're not here for yourself. You're here for somebody else. You've already accepted your healing last night. (laughs) That's true. All right. But you're here for your husband. He isn't here. He's in the state of Oregon. He's got cancer. And he's backslid. And you're here for him. That's right. That's thus saith the Lord. Don't believe. Have faith in God. You believe? Let's just... Let's pray now. How many of the newcomers believe now? Raise up your hand. Say, I believe. God bless you. Good. All right, now, to get this line through, I've got them all standing here. Let's just pray for them. Lay our hands on them as they pass by. All right. The Lord knows what it's all about. Let's come, sister. Now, Father God, I'm praying and laying hands while the anointing of the Holy Spirit is on me for this woman. In Go home be made well. Believe with all your heart and get well. Amen. See? It's, it, it, the Holy Spirit here. You believe it. You believe it? It isn't. When that people pass by because they didn't say it, that don't mean that they didn't get healed. See, he's still here. Here, this woman. We're strangers to one another. The Lord Jesus knows us both. You believe he can reveal to me what your trouble is? All right. You have a nervous condition. Bother with your head. Complications. You believe he knows you? Your name's Alice Wilson. You live at 204. That's right. It's your street number. You believe it's your heel now? Go home. You have your God bless you. You believe, sister? See you limping. You believe God will heal you? In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be healed. Come. Amen. You believe, my brother? In the name of Jesus Christ, may you receive your healing. Remember, that same name that made John jump when he was dead has been called over you while the anointing of the Holy Ghost is here. Go rejoicing. Amen. Lord Jesus, heal this, my brother. Make him well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be made well. Come, my sister. Leaving now? In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon her. You said these signs shall follow them. May she be healed. Amen. You believe, my brother? In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay hands upon my brother for his healing. Amen. 
Come now. Leave with all your heart. But you're not for yourself or somebody else. They got cancer. They live in Arkansas. Go believing, you'll get well. Just keep believing. Keep believing. Keep praying. Amen. You believe? Go get you a hamburger now. That old nervous stomach. Thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, my brother. Sitting right back there, a little bit of eye trouble. God makes you well. Go home, be well. Jesus Christ heals you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may my sister be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, may my sister be healed. It's so far back. It's right back here in the middle. These two women. One of them has very coarse veins. One sitting next to her has something wrong with her neck and bowel trouble. Eyes up. Jesus Christ makes you well. Hallelujah. Bleed. They were sitting there praying for her. That's what did it. Pray for one another. Have faith. See? Just have faith in God. In the name of Jesus Christ. No one Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. Come, my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just little boy. Oh, Lord God, heal this little cripple boy. May he walk and be well. Bless our sister and heal her in Jesus' name. Heal my brother, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Come, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may she be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, may my sister be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, may my brother be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, may my brother be healed. Sitting right back here, looking at me on the end of the row, lay there with hip and back trouble. Jesus Christ makes you well. Go home and believe. God bless you. In Jesus' name, may you be How do you do? Is this? We're strangers to one another, sir. I don't know you. I have never seen you. We're just man that's met here on earth. That's all. You believe that the God of heaven raised up his son Jesus, knows you. You believe that? That's good faith. If God can tell me what your trouble is, you believe me to be his servant? You got arthritis for one thing. You can't hardly get up of the morning. That's right. Then you have liver trouble. And you're a Catholic by faith. That's right. You got a friend with you. He's sitting right there. You believe God can tell me what his trouble is? You believe it? He has trouble with his leg, his knees. He's got complications like that. That's right, isn't it? Everything is gone. Go home and be well, both of you. Jesus Christ makes you well, sir. Amen. Amen. Do you believe all things are possible? Only believe. How many of the rest of you believe? With all your hearts. Now, the Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe. We haven't got time to call any more prayer cards. It's after 10. Lay your hands over on one another. I'll pray for you from right here. I don't care what your trouble is. Just lay your hands on one another. I don't care what your trouble is. The Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe. The Holy Ghost is making me happy. He's making you happy. So it's the same God. Every one of you everywhere. Lay your hands across one another. And believe with all that's in you. O oh Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, I now rebuke the devil, the power of the enemy. Satan, you can't hold these people any longer. They believe the word just as Mary did. They're accepting the word just like Mary did. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out of them. Thou evil spirits of sickness and affliction, leave the people that they might be made well. <laughs>